All right, and uh, we are live. So this is uh, episode uh, three, maybe four. So um, anyway, how's it how's it going, uh, Bran? Hey, it's uh, it's going good, man. Thank you for the uh, the invite for the stream, the uh, the Knights of the Roundtable. I like it. You know, it's fun. The uh, the handful of times that we've been able to do it already, and appreciate you having me on tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem at all. So, uh, I guess how, how have things been for you since the since the new year? Do you have like any? Uh, well, you don't have to share this obviously on stream, oh, yeah, no, but for sure, uh, for sure. yeah, yeah. I know there's always like New Year resolutions and stuff. So, oh yeah, no, uh, totally, man. Um, yeah, you know the, the the New Year's going good. I mean, 2020 was was a you know obviously it wasn't a good good year as far as like all the social circumstances and politically and things like that go. But personally, yeah, with with being in Hex and with being in the community. It's been, you know, one of my best years and whatnot, but, but, uh, but yeah, when you mentioned kind of like the new year and things like that, uh, I guess kind of one of the things that I'm trying to, you know, sl slow, it feels slow, but getting back into is just the, the consistency and like, and like, like health, you know, like, like working out, um, you know, eating a little bit healthier and, and, uh, and things like that. Cause you know, when, when you're, uh, when you're in it for the long run and you're, you got like Quattro Cinco Hex steaks and. And just in general, you're not thinking so short term, then that's obviously a priority that that you don't want to uh, neglect, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Health, <clears throat> health is uh, super important. I, I know there's that tweet from uh, uh, Richard recently, like he, there was the, the graph as far as like certain illnesses and like by countries and like the US was way up, like way up on the chart. So uh, really interesting. So, but anyway, we also have a Motley investor here as well. How's it going, Motley? What's up? Sorry about that. I had to go run and oh, hydrate, not, my, yeah. hydrate my eyeballs, everyone. So I'm back. Uh, what were we talking about? We just did a New Year's resolution. Yeah, we were just talking since, uh, I guess, since New Year's. I, I, I don't, I, we just, uh, I guess, started off with that conversation so anyway it's not it's not stuff that has to be shared on stream obviously or anything like that if there's no, i i like it bram it's like well besides yeah. everything being horrible of the previous year <laughs> yeah. we have good things like hex and cryptocurrency the new bull run and everything like that so good stuff mm -hmm. to look forward to and um like you touched on make sure that you're maintaining good physical health to go alongside with the mental health so it's always a good aspect to keep and work on regardless mm -hmm. of what you're doing especially in crypto much needed to uh, kind of rejuvenate you uh, during these uh, dips and green candles and you might lose your sanity if you're not careful. Yeah, I see. And I, and I see you have, oh, sorry, Brian was about to say something. Oh, no, there. no, please do. No, please do. Yeah, yeah. I was just, I was even, even back to the, uh, cause I, I see uh, Motley has the, the staker app on That's there. Is right. that, is that off the, is that off the, uh, is that the, 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 the referral link? Yeah, so that's that's after, off the referral link. Um, mm -hmm. For you guys that don't know, I mean, I guess we, we'll probably get into this a little bit later so there's more people in here. But um, Staker app is an app for essentially around Hex. You can also get USDC and Ethereum, but it allows you to go from fiat to those three cur uh, cryptocurrencies. And then it also has your wallet on the, on the app as well, along with the ability to do the staking feature. So you can do a single stake or you can set up your ladder and one single push of the button. So the Hex community is obviously very thrilled about it. Um, everyone should have the referral links now. They've just started like a soft rollout. Uh, right now they only have so many wallets. I think they have a couple thousand wallets they're sending out. So they're slowly sending those out mainly to new users, just because it costs a lot of money to create those, uh, those wallets for the apps. And uh, right now they're doing Android and then iPhone's going to be short to follow here in the next uh, next week or so. I think they're trying to get it going by the end of this month. Audio, bud. There we go. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Uh, I, I have a uh, Apple, so I still have to wait a little bit until I get Bro. the buy, buy get a the new app. buy a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually do. No, I'm 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 getting uh I'm getting really close to kind of making that investment, but um. The one I've had is still, it's still going over four years. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Save that money for what it matters. <laughs> Investments. Yeah. Well, in, even for the people that were like, you know, I'm only an iOS user and I, I still want the, the update, you know, um, there are, it, it's obviously an extra step, but there are like emulators that you can do to, to run like uh, and, a staker app on Android on your computer, uh, whether yep. it's iOS or uh, Mac. And then 
or iOS or PC, and then you can still shill your ref lake once you once you get it from there, you know? Yep. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to try to do a tutorial run through of from going from card to staked in the app and do that, uh, try to get it done tomorrow. I think it's kind of my goal, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to probably use some, something like that. One of the apps or software to go from my phone to the computer and just record on there. That's a tentative plan. Mm, okay. I need, I need to go to those like mobile gamers that have the whole setup and know the ins and outs of that to figure out how I'm going to actually record and uh, transfer all that. Yeah, there's a. That's a good question, actually. I, I have I haven't had to do that on a phone specifically. It's a little. It's, it's of course way easier on like a PC where you have like OBS Studio installed and can record easily if you're giving like a tutorial so not really yeah no i'm actually not really sure how that would be done on a on a phone either i'd have to do some research on it if anyone knows feel free to hit me up uh in the dms uh later i'd much appreciate it but i'll probably mm -hmm. look into it tonight i know david feeder did a uh like a once hexo did his thing on the staker app um david did the same thing on i think it was just uh obs and then it was like an android emulator but he might be a guy to reach out to as well yeah, he he definitely would. Yeah, Joe was just talking about recording with the video and then importing the video. I'd like to sync video and audio if I could and just save save myself the hassle later. A lot of chopping up, but yeah, yeah. So Staker app, it's uh, it's really cool and it's the first time we've had. Uh, obviously, guys, there's a referral code that goes into this since the first time we've had a referral code since the big payday um, on November nineteenth. So that's really nice we kind of talked about it on discord syndicate last night but it's nice to finally have an incentive to come out and promote hex not that we need it but a lot of us were doing stuff where we were coming out of our own pocket doing um different campaigns and stuff where we were spending hundreds or thousands of dollars and no monetary it we we enjoy doing it and we believe in the product so much we don't mind but it's nice to actually try to get some reimbursement through that as we go out so and it's just going to enable a lot of other hexagons that maybe don't have that surplus cash to actually go out there and do their own promotions as well so it's definitely refreshing to uh have that aspect again so thanks to firebun and just so you guys know it's just built into the fees so there's not going to be any additional fees if you use someone's qr code that person is just going to get 20 percent of the total fees so don't feel like you're getting overcharged or anything if you scan someone's qr code that's always yeah. nice I mean, a lot of people feel like oh just because i joined something that you know they're missing out but it's not that case so good point what were you guys yeah I was, just, I was just about to i was about to go uh just just pulling up some um pulling up some things on the screen here because <clears throat> yeah we we have a we have a couple like a, a couple of topics we can cover honestly like it's usually the streams are a pretty mixed bag of like uh, topics and stuff but um there's a really there's actually there's it, it actually goes into the whole um so recently i guess i'll, I'll try to just do like a just a really like a really short um really short breakdown of what happened recently this is actually like in, in stock so it goes into a, a reason of why shorting is such a terrible idea on <laughs> any investments period like such a horrible idea so uh basically reddit annihilated a hedge funds like nuked them 12 billion dollars uh there's a huge run-up on a uh, gamestop massive shorts this is basically this is going to be uh, a pretty historic event um and it just goes into why shorting in general is just a terrible like it's literally the 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 it's it's pretty wild to see like even hedge funds like expose themselves to like such high levels of risk um with like tons of people money so they got completely nuked like 12 billion gone lost not coming back um and it was basically uh the whole the whole thing was basically uh it was it was organized like through reddit and it's there's there's not really like a it, like a scenario here where they can have a uh, like insider trading or any of that it was basically reddit nuked the hedge funds um like one of the biggest hedge funds um and i'll actually pull up a, a price chart here because um, it's nuts it's it's yeah, it's literally like one of the most wild things I've ever, like I've, I've pretty much witnessed. But I think a lot of it's it's starting to show that, um, like even places like uh, Wall Street bets and things like that are starting to have pull on the market. And um, I I always like recommend people to like think like long term on all their stuff. So like in the case for for hacks, like 
the idea is like you don't you obviously don't ever have to worry about these kinds of extreme scenarios especially since you're staked like you're not um you're not ever trying to go against like the the market but even for total uh for even that's something like uh gamestop which is obviously like that's been in a rut for a very long time um you're always going to put yourself at yeah literally dying, dying. but basically but even even in that case like uh in things like stocks, like even cryptocurrency, um, <clears throat> if you have large players enter an asset, they can still move the price of it regardless of like perceived fundamentals. So I think basically what happened here, this is going to be kind of a uh, like an awakening, at least for people at Wall Street, that they don't have, um, they just don't have like the same level of influence on the market anymore because as they used to. As they used to yeah. So. Uh, let me let me do a, a share screen here. And that's a that's a good point. You said like the the fundamentals just don't really apply. Following the chart, doing analysis, it just really doesn't apply when you have these whales coming in and have mm -hmm. that ability to impact impact the price that much and liquidate. Like when you have all those short positions and just come in and liquidate everyone in a foul swoop, like you you have no way of predicting that unless you're literally you know know the players in the space. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this is actually what the chart uh, looks like for GameStop. So, um, this is a this is a, a th these are the weekly candles for GameStop, and basically this hedge fund, the complete nuke price level was at one hundred and seventy five dollars, uh, and the price actually closed around one fifty uh, as of like at the end of today. But the after hours trading is actually around two hundred dollars. So. Uh. Um, so long as like the price closes above 175 on Friday, they lost 12 billion dollars. Um, it's basically a complete bankruptcy. Uh, Elon Musk actually tweeted on it. Uh, his his tweet actually ended up the uh, it, the price actually moved even higher after uh, after Elon tweeted on it because it was it was I think from his side it was more comical because he he's had to deal with this kind of stuff with Tesla and they got oh, completely yeah. smashed on uh, Tesla stocks as well. So. Um, yeah, so this is why, uh, this is a good example as to why like shorting is a terrible idea. So literally a hedge fund goes from 12 billion and loses all of it. So pretty, pretty insane. Just how quickly like, uh, money can literally disappear with, um, just bad, um, just like bad strategies and like shorting is never a good, you'll, you'll, you'll never make like, you'll never make good money shorting period like your upside potential is just not there yeah and R R richard hart talks about it all the time like if if you start at a thousand dollars and you sh you short it the best you could ever do is get maybe a 2x and that's it like yeah you you have no you have no more room for profit after it just mathematically doesn't make sense to do anything right. but long you're just asking for trouble like this yeah that's why that's why i'm i'm really hoping one day there's a uh, through like one of the like the DeFi platforms, there's a way for for traders to try to like short something like Hex because they all get smashed. Like, can't wait. <laughs> um, that's you can pull up the the price chart here. Actually, even before we even get to the the price chart, let me flip this off over here. Yeah, I just want I just wanted to bring that. It was not. It's more of a, a this is it's a pretty historical moment. Actually, that's that's going to be. Uh, because they're they're gonna try to point fingers basically as to like who did this and like try to have like fines or whatever. But the thing is, is there's you can't like it's literally like Reddit on the internet against Wall Street, so you yeah, can't who like you coming after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, honestly, no financial advice. But if you any of you guys have that stock, I would strongly consider getting out now. I'm sure you made plenty of yeah. money. Uh, time to move on <laughs> because yeah. at the end of the day, GameStop. Right. I really do believe it's just a dying company. So you, you might want to, you might want to move out. <laughs> yeah. Like the, and, and there's, there is a, it's fun. Cause I'm seeing like, uh, it's the same, it's the same behavior you see. Like after, um, there's like a lot of green candles, like people, it's so true. Like people like to buy after like you have four, four, like ma massive weekly green candles because, um, there's people asking if like now is like a good time to get in. <laughs> and it's like literally uh, all the <laughs> like all, all the shorts literally just got squeezed. Like their market buys have there's no there's basically not really um well I don't I don't know if there's any any shorts left to squeeze on that, but literally like they're getting in at like the pinnacle. Cause I, I think once Monday comes around, like I I, I think it's gonna be just like a waterfall on the price. 
And then um, there might be like other there there they it's very possible like Wall Street bets starts to target other um, like dead stocks and then just squeezes shorts on them just because they can they can do it they can um, do after okay. so <clears throat> pretty impressive. But yeah, that's at least for the for the Wall Street play. Like on the crypto side, um, uh, I kind of I looked into some of the news like with the whole like I know I know on Twitter there was like uh, tweets floating around as far as uh like ethereum getting pulled off like centralized exchanges so um it's there is like some truth to it but um uh it's not as extreme as like what most of the tweets were suggesting so the supply for um the supply for ethereum on centralized exchanges has maybe dropped around 20 percent since august of of 2020 so the supply is like steadily decreasing and there might be like a a big drop off at some point, but we're not quite there yet. Um, the supply on, on these exchanges is hovering around uh, twenty to twenty two million. Um, there's a there's a there's a chart I have here, but it's not that. Um, I can't show the full chart, but I'll I'll post the link. Uh, Do you think it's, just, in the chat. It, it's getting pulled out, and a lot of these big players are just moving more into the DeFi space and going through these centralized exchanges less or is it is it their supply they're actually reducing um yeah that's it that's a good so the i was almost i was speculating at the time like we would see more of that because um at this point i don't there's not really like a big necessity to use things like coinbase really because you can get all this stuff through uniswap right. uh and I think at some point we are going to see more and more of that because the the daily volume through the DEX is across uh, Ethereum. It probably adds up close to like 1.5 billion a day just across everything. Most of it's just speculative uh, trading from like different um, like Ethereum coins. Uh, but like even even with that, like there's there's more there's basically more pull going on through Uniswap right now as opposed to something like Coinbase. Like the volume on there already exceeds. The daily uh, volume on Coinbase for for Ethereum. I, I'm not sure if it's like across like all their all their assets, but if you take Ethereum plus all the ETH tokens they have, it, it's less than what runs through Uniswap. So even though there there is like a lot of people complaining about things like fees, uh, what <clears throat> what a lot of people underestimate in these uh, bull market cycles is the most dominant chains. So really that being Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, last cycle, it was, it was Bitcoin. This cycle is both Bitcoin and Ethereum this time. Um, the most dominant chains have so much demand for the block space that you start to see these, um, higher fees. Like now, if, if somebody wants to move through Uniswap, they're going to pay anywhere from like 40 to a hundred dollars to make the, to broadcast the transaction. So, um, kind of the nature is like people have to be a little more efficient as they're as they're using that um, if they're using that tool. Um, but the thing is, there's always like a mentality that <laughs> the fees are basically the like the ends to like it's it's always like it's basically always overblown. Like the fees are like gonna cause like you know Ethereum to lose dominance when it's actually kind of the other way around because there's there's so much value that's locked up on it. Um, that it's it's really hard for um, it's really hard for basically people that have a lot of money that are entering the market to look at alternatives. Really, it's uh, when you start to see retail coming in with like smaller amounts, like four to five hundred dollars, they might just throw it into like some random coin that they can because they're they're trying to be so really because the, the mentality is like they buy some random coin on the exchange and then they want to transfer it to another exchange. So they end up um, I think they end up actually getting churns. Uh, trying to do like trading and all sorts of things. Uh, so the, the 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 mentality with the fees, um, I'll I'll just kind of say is like not. It's it's very wrong in the bull market cycles. Like the chains with huge demand are always going to have these kinds of fees. Um, at least yep. until they get to uh, like F two, uh, which is that's still um that still could be like two years out uh, before we even get to that point. Hopefully sooner, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just like the modern day gold rush, especially like, like you said, mm -hmm. with like mass adoption, these guys are coming in with lower amounts and stuff. They're really just trying to strike it rich with one coin and just kind of making their speculative uh, play with whatever they have. And usually that's going to be some random coin they find on like Uniswap or what have you, some low market cap mm -hmm. kind of coin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's why for all the, 
Um, when you guys are setting up your staking ladders, <clears throat> uh, definitely take into a mind like gas fees in the <clears throat> in the future. I mean, there's there's not like a model that's going to tell you what the fees are, but um, it's possible it's still comparable to what we see today. Uh, so that's 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 one thing. Um, that's one thing I think that's like kind of underrated, or at least maybe that I think the gas fees are are going to be um, something that maybe somebody like new might overlook. Um, for, I mean, for, for us like that, we've been using this stuff for a while. It's like pretty, it's pretty, it's like, it's more obvious to us, I guess, but yes. for somebody new, it's like, it might not be, um, as obvious to them. And plus like, plus on top of that, since we got the big payday bonus, um, <clears throat> there's already like a, it helps out a lot with, with this, with the stakes that are going on now. So <clears throat> there's a certain, there's a certain minimum, I have a uh, staking now. Like if I, if I put like a new stake in, there's a certain minimum I want to use um, just to give myself like a nice hedge for fees and all that. Um, you you and, care to share? That's probably valuable information. Um, yeah. I'm pro I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm probably going overkill, but basically if I, if I'm doing a stake, like I would I, at this point, like I'm probably going to do things that are at least 10 or more years out on my staking ladder and kind of the, the, the baseline for me is probably going to be um any i would say at least like seventy five thousand, uh preferably like a hundred thousand hex or higher which could be i mean i could be going way overkill on the on the amounts but um just to give basically give myself like a nice cushion because uh i think at least early on like there there were some really cool staking ladders people did that <clears throat> they looked awesome like there's a lot of like really cool ones that looked as, as they looked really clean aesthetically um but yeah. you do have to like eventually in the future you are going to have to like <clears throat> uh pay to um basically mint your coins again and then uh it, at that point it's like is does it really matter if you do let's say a stake for one year versus having monthly uh monthly stakes coming out um because at the end of the day it's like if you're if you're claiming your coins like 12 years from now ideally like if you're if you're playing the game right, you end up actually only uh, peeling off like parts of the interest and then restaking it out, so that you always have um, like future hex coming in at a later point in time. So uh, I think for me, I'm gonna keep it at least like maybe a uh, if I'm gonna if I do multiple year multiple stakes a year, I'll, I'll do it by quarter, um, and then if in the future if that's even too much, I'll just uh, kind of prune it down to maybe just doing like uh, tw t uh twice uh stakes coming out like every every uh six months uh or every 12 months but it i guess it really just depends on what um each person's like uh financial needs are but i i think even a yearly is like that's probably enough for most for most people like if you just do a yearly stake like that's probably fine there's um the idea is you want to basically hold on to it for a long period of time because really with the uh, with the rewards you get from staking i mean <clears throat> if you look at market cycles you always have these um you always have bullish phases like contraction phases and then like during the bear markets you have like huge rounds of fud you're basically getting paid to like um you're basically getting paid like through that entire that entire timeline which like if you, if you look at it like even in terms of like fud for example like Bitcoin had so much FUD in the bear markets. It was insane. Like even, even this last one we had, there was a ton of FUD and you're basically getting like the difference now is you're actually getting paid during that um, time period yep. for your future self. So um, I think that's pretty important because um, yeah, I mean, that's, this is really kind of a, well, a good opportunity it, to get. It, it's different, right? Like we haven't yeah. had anything like hex in the bear market. So I, I am, I'm actually, Obviously, I don't want the bear market to come anytime soon, but I am the part of me is a little bit curious to see how Hex reacts in a bear market because I don't think we're going to experience some of the volatility a lot of the rest of the market is. I could mm -hmm. be wrong, but we'll time time will tell. So, a little morbid curiosity. Uh, my bear side likes to kind of speculate on what Hex is going to do in a bear market, but uh, I thought a lot of those points were good that you touched on for. For new guys getting into hex, I'd have a couple of recommendations. If you're gonna start your staking ladder, I wouldn't stake. Honestly, I wouldn't stake anything less than a year. Get your, you get an additional twenty percent shares every year that you stake. So go ahead, start your staking year uh, ladder about a year out. If you want to make any short term plays before that, which I know isn't popular, but keep some liquid hex. Don't, don't stake it. Anything less than a year, it's really not worth your while, especially with gas fees in the middle of a bull market. Unless you're staking some serious amount of hex, not gonna be worth it. So. 
start yeah. start your ladder a year out and then uh like look into crypto was saying he's he's doing about seventy five thousand. i think my recommendation is usually at right now about fifty thousand hex and then obviously the further you go out with uh the t shares increasing you can you can put a little bit more um you can you can get a little further ahead because obviously you're going to go up by 20 percent every year so mm. pay longer pays better is going to kind of help you set you up for success but yeah, I really don't like seeing anyone doing less than 50,000 stakes if you can help it. And again, like looking to crypto said, consolidate. Like you don't need monthly ladders coming out. Put a big put a big stake at the beginning of the year and just consolidate. Start with an annual ladder. And then if you do have time to fill it in later, come back and do biannually. Come back, do quarterly. But consolidate what you have now and just have larger, larger um, stakes. And then it's just going to keep you safer for the future. So I, I, I gotta go with that strategy. And then, uh, I always like to work my way back from longer to shorter, just take advantage of the whole system. But mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing with hexagons right now. Um, even some of the OGs, like we get impatient with the sideways action because it is, it is boring. Like it, you don't really have much price movement. So everyone kind of gets antsy, but like, this is what hex was designed for. Like it is a long term financial asset. Like we're not, we're not here for like the short plays. Um, everyone else in the market that's doing quick, uh, flip flips, uh, pump and dumps the whole, the whole nine yards. It's, it's, it really is truly unique and it's, it's a different design than what we're used to in crypto. So that's why we get a little antsy sometimes with sideways action. Yeah. As far as gas goes, I just want to add on to that point just real quick is, you know, people think gas fees are expensive now, but if you're staking hex, um, say if it's even just for a month, that whole month that it's staked when you end it, when you end stake, the the gas fee that it costs you to end the stake is going to be more than it costs you to do the stake because it's got to do that computation. And so if you're having a whole bunch of these like small, small stakes that are like especially short time horizon too, then it's uh, it's maybe something that could bite you in the butt if uh, if the gas fees do end up being more than the ethereum uh, than the hex was worth of you staking so i agree with you guys that there is kind of like a you know obviously everyone's limit is different and your time horizon is different too but but people should be considering these types of things instead of doing like 200 stakes like i don't know yeah maybe if you did have something annually you could just consolidate it into an annual stake versus like 12 different stakes because that way you got your t shares that are working for you collectively as opposed to just diversifying it into smaller subsets. So Edward. that was a, thank you, Brandon. That was a good point. I knew I was missing something. And that's, uh, again, what look into crypto was saying earlier that that's kind of an aspect that gets lost on new users to hex is they might consider the gas fees now, which are high, but they're, they're still manageable, but they don't realize when it comes to in staking that, that function is actually going to be much more gas intensive because it's what the, what it's doing is it's literally going back and calculating day to day to day all the way up to current day from when you first started your stake and it's running through all those calculations of how much interest you should have all the emergency and stake penalties so those those uh functions are going to be a lot more gas heavy than just making a stake or transferring uh your currency between wallets so a lot of new users unless they're very mm. um they've done a lot of research they're probably going to miss out on that aspect they're like oh yeah five ten bucks i can do it and then they get hit with maybe like a 30 30 gas fee and they'd be like what the heck or 40 dollars gas fee so that was yeah. a good point that you brought up yeah and <clears throat> and uh and uh david's right that gas it like eventually gas is going to be at a cheaper price because what's going to happen with uh ethereum 2 uh, once they get sharding implemented, the way <clears throat> the way that works, and, and there might there's probably going to be a lot of um, like a lot of discussion, like in the research group for for Ethereum. Um, but really, the 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 breakdown of Ethereum too is um, the idea is you have like a bunch of chains that are running in parallel to each other, and then Ethereum you think of it as as today you could think of that as like shard one or one of those parallel chains. But then a lot of the economic activity could basically um, go onto these other parallel chains so that everybody's not trying to uh, use the same um, block space on this on the same shard. So they're, they're gonna get it sorted out. It's gonna be a combination of the um, of sharding plus like they have layer two stuff that's uh, probably gonna roll out much sooner. That'll help. Um, that'll basically just help make it really just much more efficient whenever you need to send. I, Ethereum or uh, make like a transaction or, or sorry, or, or interact with like one of the smart co contracts. So um, 
yeah, all that, all those things are going to get worked out. I think a lot of it's the, uh, when people kind of look at these things, they look at the, <clears throat> they look at uncertainty in like a, like a three to a six month timeline, but these, these chains, I mean, they're, they're evolving, um, years at a time. There's a ton of, uh, researchers on Ethereum that are, uh, basically keeping this thing, keeping this thing running and they're going to be here for a very long time. So, um, all of it's going to get sorted out. It's just, it's nice if you, let's say you stake, let's just say you stake like a hundred thousand hex over like a 10 year timeline, <clears throat> the amount of, uh, the amount you'd get, uh, just from the T shares on that alone. I mean, you could be potentially doing like over a, a ten times on your stack with like the principal. Um, so pr- I think it's even more than that. I think even Close, what I'm closer saying closer to now twenty. Is closer to closer 20. to twenty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not quite twenty, but closer to twenty, I'd say. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> even the the APY. Like you could think a very small, very small percent of it. Like that's why if you if you stake a large enough size, it, it becomes like pretty negligible at a certain point with like the gas fees, especially if you're thinking like really far out. So that's, that's kind of, I think like they're going to be the, the, the really good play. Um, Cause it, it I, and that, that all boils back down to like the, the T shares. But um, if you guys are interested, we could pull up the staking ladder. Cause I, I have some speculation on that. Let's um, do it. So let's take a, take a look at that. Uh, let's share screen. Okay, so here here's the staking ladder as of today. So we 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 of course have like the stakes that are um, some of these big stakes that are coming up, and then we get this. We basically kind of get a ramp down uh, going into the summer of uh, 2021 or <laughs> summer summer of this year. But after like you can kind of see there's the the stakes basically start to taper off going up through um 2022, and it even starts to taper off a little bit going into 2024. So there's there's kind of a there's what I'm seeing here is there's kind of a there's like a span of years where you really don't have much stakes that are coming out. It's really like you have you have um you have initially these larger stakes that are coming out and then uh, a certain amount of that's gonna likely get restaked to later. Um they'll, they'll likely start filling in some of the gaps maybe after like 2032 and onwards. But I mean, after we have some of these larger stakes come out. Uh, there's really not much basically from 20, what I'm seeing is from 2023 up through, uh, basically up through 2029, there's really not much from what I'm seeing, like nothing, there's just really not a lot of supply at all. Cause a lot, and you have to consider like, um, a lot of these two are going to get restaked as well. So, um, I think the, the analogy to diamond is, is kind of, I, to me, it looks applicable just from the, the way the staking ladder is set up because, uh, basically, hardly any supply coming into the market, and then 2030. This could be speculated as possibly like a bear period for for price because you have larger stakes that are coming out. But then, similarly, afterwards, um, even after these gaps start to get filled, you could basically end up in another lull where there's just not much supply that's hitting the market. So, um, I think what people are kind of reacting to now is there's a lot of uh, uh, early stakes in the system that are. Um, their coins are getting minted, but at a certain point, like that, any kind of selling pressure you get to that is going to subside at a certain point, and it's really just time. And I and I think really the staking ladder is just a good way to uh, kind of um, look at what that trajectory could could possibly look like for um, twenty twenty one and basically for like the next eight to nine years afterwards. So, uh, pretty impressive just how small or or little supply there is going to be compared to like what we've seen from big payday and even just a couple months afterwards. Cause I mean, this is literally like, I think the, the biggest we're going to see possibly, um, I don't, I don't want to say it cause it really depends on what this, this guy could basically position like his stake somewhere down here. But if he, if he's, if he um, ends up spreading it out, like it, it helps kind of smooth out that transition quite a bit. So, um, I that's, don't think there's any much supply at all. Yeah, that's what I was saying um, in the past on another stream when we were kind of messing around what we think the large state's going to do. Like, if it was me personally, like, I would break this all up into the 150 million stakes. Mm-hmm. So you get, you max out the uh, larger pays better, which a lot of people either aren't aware of or it's just not much of a factor since most of us aren't moving stacks of 150 million hex. And I would break these up and I would literally fill in I would fill in these these years past year 10. I do like 11 to 15. I would just fill these in with 150 million uh, mm-hmm. hex stakes. And, and 
Silver the Ando, he's done chain analysis on this guy. And he is the largest uh, shareholder in Hex when it comes to T-shares. So, like, why not maintain your position in the system and be one of the largest, if not the largest whale in the system? Like, that's much more appealing to me than just coming out with some short-term gains at this point. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, that's... um. I, I, that's, and I, I think we are going to start to see a lot of that, um, after basically after these stakes expire. So I think at this point, like, uh, enough, there's probably a good chunk of people that are aware of like the staking ladders more because, um, it just kind of happened that the first big stakes that came out kind of happened to like position themselves like around the same time frame, which is, of course, not, not the best thing to do. Um, but now that more are paying attention to this, like, I don't, I don't really expect like something as um, kind, of, kind of comparable to what we're seeing now. I think a lot of that's just going to get kind of smoothed out by the chunks that uh, Motley just mentioned. Well, what this what this reminds me of this large consolidation of uh, stakes and the time period that we're coming up on right now. I think it was a lot of us in the beginning too, where we just have that old mindset of crypto, like short term. Like m most of us weren't thinking a little bit past, much more past than a year give or take like a year and a couple months. And like, this was more of our like feeling out stage. Like I know for me personally, I, I put stuff from like one year, two year, three year. And like, I was initially weighted very heavy for these time periods, just for the fact that like, I don't know what it's going to do. I know like crypto, usually we get those one or two years and then we die off for years at a time. And who knows that the project was going to survive. So that was kind of like, at my time, that was my hedge to myself. Like, well, I'll put it here. I should be able to uh, see profits and I can go from there. But luckily we have features that were built in at the time, like emergency end stake. And I was able to emergency end stake a lot of these, uh, a lot of these stakes when they got to the 50% mark without penalties and then fill in my ladder and make it much, much more balanced and weighted um, towards the middle. And even sometimes a little bit longer on my stakes. But I think a lot of this was just kind of us hedging our bets early on in the product, in the product now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and um and time time definitely has like the biggest uh, impact in the grand scheme of things. Like that's uh, if you look at um even even Ethereum, like the bear market was tough for uh, really. It's mostly just psychological for Ethereum holders at the time that were buying like in the depths of the bear market, and then you of course have um you 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 always have like toxic like Bitcoin uh, maxis or whatever, just like. Um, so, so you're going to basically get a lot of that in these in these markets. So uh, generally, if you're staking, let's say 10 to 15 years or or years out at a time, like the price movements you see today really don't matter, like at all. Literally, they 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 just don't matter. Um, so <clears throat> that's I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be uh, in terms of like habits and stuff. Like if you do if your average stake length is let's say like seven to 10 years, then um, if you're actually caught looking at like price charts uh, frequently, you're actually going to be more likely to do things like emergency unstake uh, later on um, when you start to see like big runups and things like that. Because um, like you're basically putting your your emotions are getting uh, more heavily involved. Oh, actually, DCC actually just joined. Let me let me add him to the stream. Yo so, yo. Dollar cost. What's up, bud? What you guys just, doing? You know, just, uh, just talking, talking about. Dirty nastiness of the crypto space. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, I was, I was basically saying like you're when you're staking hacks, like you know, you know how with with coins and stuff, you always have fud. Uh -huh. You 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 basically get paid to like deal with like fud with a really high APY. I'm being serious. Like you, yeah, you're, you're right, yeah. <laughs> like that's uh, like in in uh, even Ethereum, like there is so much. Uh, that's why that's why I generally like I don't really. I, like whatever the news is saying, I don't. I don't really look at what the news is saying. I. I just. I just look at the charts and then I let. I let that kind of stuff see what the <clears throat> what the macro picture looks like. Is a lot of the <clears throat> a lot of the stuff you see on Twitter, like it's literally just most people just um. You know, if they bought like Bitcoin or whatever, they're they're kind of psychologically or emotionally tied to like their holdings, so that they feel the necessity to like shit talk other I coins and things like that. I'd feel so bad for a guy that just owns Bitcoin only. Mm. Oof. <laughs> oof, oof, no, wreck. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no. With those guys too, they, they double down. Like, like the more, 
you know, Richard, he at least learned with Ethereum to change your worldview. But some of those maxis, they they double down even more. And it's like, dude, no, you're just wrong. Like, learn, you know. Mm. Of the round table. Okay, got it. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. Oh. Did, How was it? Did Brent, did Brent my, mute himself? No, Brent. Brent, Brent I can hear him. Oh, yeah, okay. I can hear him. Yeah. I do want to say one thing real quick. Um, so in regards to the staking chart that uh, that look into the crypto brings, uh, you know, Hex is one of the first cryptocurrencies that has a a chart of like the the future market cap supply on on the stake ends, and and we do see it dwindle down. Um, you know, so many mm-hmm. people think like, oh, it's got X amount of billions of coins and this and that and this and that. And in reality, Hex is a lot more rare than we really think it is, you know? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's more of a diamond than it is something that you just sell a whole bunch of, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, and yeah, I, I literally had, this was I, this was actually a couple months ago, but uh, I, I literally, because the, the staking ladder, I literally, not financial advice, I have no idea if this is obviously going to play out. This is just, this is me, I was looking at like the, the staking ladder, and then I had a dream. I had this dream where Hex went, it's like an eight-year bull market because of the staking ladder. <laughs> that sounds like a DC <laughs> dream to me. <laughs> Dude, my brother had a Hex dream the other day, and, and I, I got him into Hex, like he's never bought any, like I've only ever mm-hmm. donated him some but he's like brand i had a hex dream the other day and the price just kept going up and it's like shit mm-hmm. i thought i would have the first hex dream but it's it's cool man it's it's awesome brand brand what is on your neck i just noticed you got a big old chain i just what's up oh yeah shit, my bad it's uh you know richard <laughs> had the same problem where it's only one-sided so i and you know uh, oh, I I, yeah, I knew what it was though. <laughs> that was uh that was in sh- that's that uh same one is in Shapeways or whatever as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I had like the small one that has like holes, like it's all the way yeah. hollow, and then yeah, I got and it. then I saw this one when you guys mentioned that and felt like it, upgrading. I thought so it was going to be it, bigger. Is that solid gold, bro? Are you dumping on our heads right now? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, dude. I'm I'm you know. Shit. <laughs> No, no, this is some fake ass bullshit. This is just like some brush gold. <laughs> some fake ass bullshit. <laughs> My girlfriend's saying the same thing, like, whoa, what you got there? It's like, no, nah, lady. Don't, don't you know? worry about this. This is fake. <laughs> Calm down. Exactly. Hex hasn't mooned that high yet. Relax. <laughs> yet. Exactly. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. What, what did I miss since the beginning of this? <clears throat> we talked about GameStop. That was fun uh we talked about essentially yeah <laughs> we talked about a hedge fund absolutely getting annihilated all their short positions oh. uh yeah so that was that was pretty brutal nothing like seeing a seven and a half x in the traditional markets and just watching shorts get absolutely destroyed isn't uh, it which, crazy that's news a yeah. seven yeah but hey i mean that is that is pretty substantial yeah uh, and even, even even in the crypto space, I mean that that that's some good gains, but it's pretty cool to see that in the financial markets as well, like traditional financial markets. Mm. Yeah, but we we talked about that. We talked about um, staking about, ladders. What about AME, bro? No, 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 that's next one they're pumping. Which one? AMC, the the movie theater chain. Oh, the movie theater. Yep. They're about to pump it, bro. They're yep. about to pump it. <laughs> Yo, that, that's what my boy was telling me. He's like, AMC's next. Like, it, it's they've literally created pump and dump groups in the traditional yeah. finance world now. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they're literally they're literally on all the different yeah. social media platforms. Like, yeah, AMC next, bro. AMC next. <laughs> Oh my yeah, god! Some of the comments on that were really because there, there was there's some guy asking about like he was asking about AMC X or AMC, and like somebody got really mad. He's like, no, <laughs> like AMC X actually has value. AMC doesn't have value, <laughs> so <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, so, but I'm um, actually sadder about AMC disappearing than I am about GameStop mm, disappearing. Yeah, I am too I, because. I don't know if it's that whole movie theater culture. I mean, like you're yeah. really mm-hmm. talking about like the extinction of movie theaters. We went from losing mm-hmm. all our drive-ins early decades mm-hmm. before our time. Right. Then we had movie theaters. Like that was the thing to do when you're 14 to 16 years old, go watch a movie, go take the girl you like on a date, go hang out th- at the mall afterwards. And like, that was, that was just like our thing. And now they're, they're looking, they're all facing just straight up complete bankruptcy at this point. Oof. We're looking at a new society in general. It seems like everything yeah. online based and the stories on at the drones. Yeah, I, I I think Brian is right on with that. Like <clears throat> I've been thinking about that as well. Like I 
I think things are going to change a lot over the next uh, eight to ten years. As I mean, stuff is already heavily connected online, but really the the, the whole pandemic thing pretty much sped that up by like a, probably at least like five or six years. So um, yeah, it's like even all of us like. I met literally all you guys through 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 the streams and stuff, which is really incredible. So it's like it's basically just like a new way for people to um, like interact with each other. Like basically, there, there's way more people meeting people like online these days. So um, it's kind. Of, I guess for for me, it was cool getting like the. Uh, getting the tail end of the 90s so i was i was born in like the early like the early 90s so i <clears throat> i still got like the tail end of like everybody still going outside at the time which was awesome like i had a really good childhood because of that um but then like it's i can definitely see like that that change like over time because like these days like you don't really have um i mean obviously this isn't true for like all like all scenarios but um like basically kids and stuff going outside like as kids like it's not it's not as not very common anymore it's, it's all online like through you know social media or xbox or whatever whatever we, we went through that transitional period like that that's all we like i was the same way so i was i was right at a 90 baby so i'm 30 yeah. now so like we i had like i had my best friend in the neighborhood and a couple others mm -hmm. and like every day it was like a new adventure like he'd be walking to my house i'd walk to his house we go into the freaking woods and build spears, blow up dams on the bridges, mm -hmm. play with firecrackers, do a bunch of stupid stuff like oh, it's like little kids. Yeah, we like we had like this like little like still wildlife. Still we had the, we we had this thing. It was like uh, we called it like the bamboo forest. And if anyone's ever seen bamboo, it just grows up like crazy. Like it'll just take over a space, and it had like this creek running through it. We like build like structures, and then we make a whole bunch of like fireworks like m80s and 100s and like put them together and blow shit up like i don't know just a bunch of stupid shit like a bunch of like eight to like 14 year old kids might do oh, or yeah. i don't know maybe maybe younger than that <laughs> but uh it, it, it was just fun going outside and like we had we transitioned from dial-up like a lot of us ex got experienced dial-up and getting kicked off the internet when someone would call your landline like most most people these days don't even know like landline dial up any of that stuff like we've we've been through that whole transitional period it's kind of a unique time to be raised and um progress yeah. throughout our lives like i i remember i remember a time when like roller skating wasn't gay you know like <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about bro i was always uh i was a rollerblader oh. I, I didn't touch those roller skates yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't pro on my scooter bro <laughs> right. remember what remember when razor scooters were like fire like everyone wanted a razor scooter Dude, the yeah i remember that actually the scooters yeah. and then you knew you knew if you like were successful you had a razor scooter and then your friend might have like the knockoff you're like oh bro is that not a razor like, <laughs> no, no. Bro, we can't we can't scooter together i'm sorry <laughs> that's not the lamborghini of scooters oh, i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> What would you guys know about Heelys? You guys know about Heelys? Oh, bro, I wanted Heelys so bad. I never got them. I thought they were the coolest thing ever when I saw the commercials, and I just never, never got a pair. Same. same. Uh, oh, is, are, that, are those the ones with like the the plastic on the bottom, where you could like you could they grind like a, a rail with your shoes or something? They had or a plastic something? wheel on the heel, and you could just <laughs> oh, okay. you would just kick your toes up, and you could just you could just slide. Uh, I don't know how people, well they worked. How did more people not just? fall so much from that like i always i'm sure they did i ate yeah. ass one time doing like i, I tried some of as like an older like old like two three years ago i tried them on i fucking <laughs> ate shit bro <laughs> Yo, how how are they constructed like are they even decent like i yeah, never they, actually saw them in person and i yeah, just like, imagine them just being the heel, awful the, the, the heel the heel is actually lifted so if, if it's flat like this yep. the heel the heel's up like that and then the wheels like right here so even if you're if you walk normally it, the wheel won't touch the floor but right. if you just well, you gotta lean back a little bit and then you'll just roll. It's Bro, sick. I kinda wanna buy a pair <laughs> just for the nostalgia. <laughs> just find some Heelys on like eBay or something. They gotta yeah. be out there. You need like the you know the adult size and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Locomot, he's just, like never too late to get Heelys. Yep, I agree. <laughs> this isn't the content you wanted, but this is the content you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. This younger generation needs to know about uh Heelys too, like I, I bet you, I bet you can bring something like he Healy's back. That would be something like I could see like trending on TikTok or uh, with the yeah. younger generation. Just like, what was this? It's like, 
those are Heelys, my friend. You know something I don't miss that I I, I don't miss, or like how fugly girls used to dress. Oh my god, the girls dress so much better now, bro. Like fuck all this like fucking shitty ass jeans everyone used to wear, man. Yoga pants are the king. Yeah, totally. They they bro. rule they rule the world. <laughs> oh my brother, man, you lucky fuck. You know how like you know, I, I went I went to school with some flat booty bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I remember my elementary school. We were a public school, but we still had even dress codes. Like I remember to this day still having to go to like Gap and uh mm. old navy and buy like these boring, like it was either khaki, navy blue, or like white. And like we had the same pants, the same shorts, the same shirt. And like we had to wear we had uniforms in <laughs> elementary school. Now now elementary school, like I don't know if it's a good thing, but like you got girls like showing skin, like what is what is going on elementary. here? Yeah, in elementary school, bro. I've seen, oh, I've seen, I've seen some stuff. Crazy. Like, yeah, so like, probably not good uh, on that end, but I, I've seen it. I've seen it. And then obviously, high school is just a goddamn free for all now. Oh, bro, it's, <laughs> a, it's a, it's like, it's like a fuck fest, homie. It's yeah, it, it's just like trying to contain the animals at this point. Like, just like, please, just like, stay here. Don't set the world on fire. Uh, just you can make it. Just get through. What? Everyone's got a smartphone too, so it's like send me your snap or you know send me your location. And oh yeah, no one's no one's paying that. attention. No one's paying attention in class, especially with uh, everything is virtual right now because of uh, that awesome virus. I'm not going to mention so we don't get kicked. But um, everything's Thanks. virtual, and these <laughs> these kids aren't doing anything because like so I'm doing Navy recruiting, so I'm actually very involved with these um, high schools now. And everything's virtual. So these guys will literally, they don't even have to turn on their camera. They just have their laptop or computer up and they're over there playing Call of Duty, not listening to two shits of what the teacher is saying. And the teachers don't even care. Like they're barely mm -hmm. teaching like half their class. They're like, well, that's good enough, guys. Like uh, get ready for your next class in half an hour. Like no one, it's bad. The whole education system, like no one seems to care at this point. Got it. Yeah. But kind 10 of out of 10 jealous. Yeah, like <laughs> I would have been, I mean, and that's another thing too, like how much, what kind of valuable information do we really come away from that like early on education system? Like, I honestly don't think too much. I, I came up with on. how, how early. early on, I mean, pretty much go, go from pre-K all the way to 12th grade. Like, I mean, there are science, I think sciences are very important mathematics to a degree. Um, some mathematics I, I would, argue. what's that? I think K to fifth grade is pretty important in terms of what you learn. It's it's like, but like outside of like, since I entered middle, middle school, man, fuck all. If I like, it's been trash, but like they didn't teach me. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm very good. I'm good at algebra and geometry. Oh my gosh. This is so amazing. Like, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, you, you, you have trouble even like, I was like this, it was the same way with me in school. Like I was, I did decently well in school, but like, I just didn't care. Like by the time, like, uh, late in middle school and early in high school, like I just didn't care. The stuff like was easy and it was just mind numbing. Like I forgot who said maybe maybe it was Gary or something. But like when you've done like a math problem once, why do I need to do it twenty more times? Like what what's what am I actually demonstrating to you that's different than from what I've already done? Like I I have a much more effective use of my time. And so like it got it got so bad to the point like I would half ass do my assignments to class before turn something in like it just it it didn't hold my interest any, anymore like we weren't learning stuff that was honestly valuable on the outside like mm -hmm. financial markets uh learning to invest um getting better with social skills and being able to speak in public just a lot of stuff that would set you up success in the real world it just it doesn't get taught there is no curriculum for it and it's setting everyone up for failure like now now you have these kids that can't even hold a conversation for more than like five seconds because they're too too used to texting and they just they don't know how to interact with each other yeah I probably i probably sound like an old man now I'm like damn you kids you and your your new iphone <laughs> <laughs> but yeah well i think to your point you know when you mentioned like when when you can tell you're listening or learning from like the same curriculum that was there like a couple of decades ago and when it's just not uh when it's not that information that you're learning on a daily basis that you're spending multiple hours on is not necessarily super applicable to the world that's going on currently and as your worldview changes i think a lot of people just realize like oh, i just rather watch this youtube video or rather watch my favorite influencer they're more interesting than this teacher you know and All teachers right. they uh, they used to crack down on it like when I was in high school and whatnot, like pretty 
seriously. But now, I to uh, to Motley's point, I think it's just a free for all, especially with like the the Zoom calls and all that stuff. People doing school online, there's no getting away from it. Hey, looking at crypto, can you share my screen? Uh, yeah, just a second. Let me <clears throat> let me. We we have another person joining the stream oh, here. Careful, wanna... Ca careful, careful but, on but before... sharing the stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, Gary's funding Jim. How's it going, Gary? Oh. Good to see you guys. Gary. What's up, Gary? I was, uh, enjoying all the commentary about what's what my life plan is for the next 15 years. I'm glad you guys mapped it all out for us. We got you. Healies. Yeah, no, I DCC <laughs> actually wants to wants to advertise some Healies over here. So uh, I was about to say see. everything boils down to Healies <laughs> tonight, guys. Like, just so you know. I, <laughs> I saw there there wasn't even I just saw this little window here with these shoes on it. I was Let's like, see it. wait a minute. <laughs> I'm excited. How right, how much are they it. going for, DC? Fifty-five fucking dollars. Are, are these new? Are these new? <laughs> yeah, you could totally, you could totally get that popular on TikTok. Just corner the market oh, yeah. before you make a oh, few these, oh, video. Yeah. oh, it's sold out. Of course, the only cool. Yeah. One. Yeah. Oh, and MTV. Yeah. Really? you can definitely see them coming back. Yeah. <laughs> slap, they got, they got their branding on there, like Healy's. Got yeah, some sweet Reebok on there. I probably buy this one. I like the camo. Camo's not bad. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, camo. Yeah, that's pretty. I can good. rock with that. Oh, I can fuck with this one actually. Yeah, yeah. I might have to. Get you need one. to have one that has one <laughs> wheel like that, and the other has two wheels, and then you just keep keep gliding. Yeah, push off. A bunch of off square pants. <laughs> oh, they're Converse. They're Converse too. <laughs> no, bro, uh, let's let's make those come back. We could definitely popularize that on like TikTok or something for sure. For like sure. next stream, hey Discord Syndicate, you guys, I got the Heelys. We're we're all on our phones, just like helium around, you know. like out in the parking lot and stuff. Every hexagon in a top hat with Heelys. <laughs> Bro. Next the next uh Bitcoin convention, if they're doing it, we should totally we should totally do that. We're just oh. <laughs> we're just healing by everyone in the convention. <laughs> top hat and Heelys, that's the, the dress code. That's the dress code. Can you imagine that we're just mean mean mugging fucking Tony Bay's like 50 of us like rolling by like <laughs> <laughs> or we're or we're just like tired of like hanging around them and we're like, all right guys, we're out. And we all just healy off. <laughs> 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 you just keep around rolling around and we were like <laughs> Can you imagine just seeing hexagons with top hats just gliding around like a conference bro? <laughs> that, hey. myth, that mental image just makes me happy. There's uh, all these uh, YouTubers that make these kinds of things, like you know, if you ask them then they'll make something. Should make one that you know, like the Healy is like the skate the skate, right? You have to push off. You have to you're the one that's delivering the energy to move. But I could just totally see one that you're just standing still, you don't move at all, and you just start rolling away like those hoverboards. It just oh, looks yeah. so fucking James Bond, you can't tell. I bet you that would be a big seller. Get like a, you're talking about like motorized or something? Yeah, just like a little motor built into the shoe, tiny, because they have them, they have the high powered ones now mm -hmm. that are super small, and it wouldn't even look like strange shoes. It'd be just like regular shoes, but you would just glide off. <laughs> I'm on look for electric Heelys right now. Yeah, electric <laughs> Heelys right now. That would that would sell, dude. You just have okay. something in your pocket, like a keychain kind of controller. You just stand still and you tick tock away, man. You'd be fucking viral. The the motors are getting smaller and smaller, so it might mm -hmm. be possible. That's gonna be one heavy shoe. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta yeah, have yeah. to keep one. You just stand yeah. like Michael Jackson, like the moonwalk. You just... <laughs> gonna, gonna have like platforms like this large. <laughs> hey, like a girls can get away with it. Others can. I know that RG can. Battery. I mean, he he look normal height if he was wearing those tall ones. Yeah, yeah, he's great. <laughs> gotta get six foot mark there. <laughs> yeah, you just you would just need a dock for your shoes at, at your at your house or your. Apartment. You, right. just, your shoes you just roll right into the Charging dock station. <laughs> our, our 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 friends at Heelys have haven't let us down. They have a motorized version of the Heelys. Oh, they let's do? see it. Throw it yeah, up, throw they it do. <laughs> they do not. I want to so see a video it, of it. So oh. the company is still in business. This is wild. With, How's this not popular? Oh my god, I gotta share this. Give me a second. It's gotta oh, be, fuck. dude. If you want to be a TikTok viral? You should do it. All they should do it. How to ride Whatever. Razor Turbo Jet electric wheel wheel? Yeah, that's how you know it'd be safe. cool. Would be if you made the Staker like logo, print it out, put it on the side of a Healy, so it looks like it's Jordan's, but it's really Staker. And then all Got of it. us like uh, do some kind of viral, like we. Like I know that people are making like music videos and they have different people doing, you know, different parts of the music video. We should do something like this and just have like a staker, a staker kind of um, TikTok thing. 
Oh, and it's called Razor. This is perfect. Electric heel wheels. What? <laughs> God damn it, DC. <laughs> That's what's wrong. This is like Prince shoes or something. What is this? They're, they're like cradles for your shoe. Oh my God. They're, they attach to your normal shoe though, right? They're just like motorized. Yeah. yeah. Back heel. Oh my, I break my, I break my ass so bad. <laughs> yeah, I want them to look like regular shoes and just like roll off. Well, that means I can, I can wear some Versace fucking shoes and shit. <laughs> just like, yeah. Nah, bro, you'll you'll scuff them up. You gotta be so careful. So, what is the trade-off with the Versace being like status improving you, and then and the, and the, it's just, the, I, I, I gotta go back uh, Clearly, it's gonna be an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check my Twitter later, you guys. I'm gonna own these. I'm buying today. <laughs> it's like, what's that? You got Versace's, and you have the new uh, Razor Turbo Jet electric heel wheels. That's right, sir. Yeah, and, and, and 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 you guys. I put a I put a Supreme sticker on the back, so the value. Supreme went sticker. Oh yeah, you you three x your money. Easy. Multi campaign, absolutely. Easy. Dude, it's we like, got to make this a reality. All of us have to be in these electronic sneakers. Each other. <laughs> the conference floor just has to be like a hardwood floor, or like or like some kind of tile or some shit. And just us, just fucking zooming around the oh, entire oh, conference. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! It's We're all just like skating and shit, just around these fucking Bitcoin maxis, like like sharks. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta slip up one of these times and you're gonna be there <laughs> we just got we're all like vlogging we all have our cameras and we're just just cruising <laughs> hey you guys don't forget to uh don't forget to check out <clears throat> iron good <laughs> that that's kind of random but yeah definitely Dude, good. you gotta see the documentary oh my god Let me see this. hey gary good episode with uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, with with uh, yeah with day 03, uh day forty three OG. Yeah, he's like, good yeah. Take a look at this. I was doing the sound thing. I don't know if it came out. My sound. Oh, I, I, he just had I, muted. I, I muted it so you guys because you guys were talking. Huh? Look at the private oh, chat. It's another kind of video. You're doing your own video for this yeah. one. Oh, good for those extra girthy feet. You can. Uh, you yeah. Know, it's Dude, high, this is so style. ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's like two shoes into one. <laughs> oh my like, god. It looks like you're just strapping an electric drill to the back of your <laughs> back of your heels. <laughs> Not dangerous at all. Oh, that was some brand. That was some brand shit right there. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. Razor. <laughs> Look at that. Super safe. This little nylon oh, strap bro. will keep ah, you. Ah, dude, you dude, this is better. <laughs> Check this out. Look in the look in the, the not the first one, but the Indiegogo. There's an Indiegogo one. Check this one out. It's got a video. Okay, I'll take it off. Give me one second. There you go. Helmet not included. <laughs> the second Man. one is the Indiegogo one. Also, if if something like that seriously happened at a conference, like the best part of the conference would just be that intro, and the rest of the conference would just suck. Like, Bro, we, we we would we would make news on that. They'd be like, "What the heck is wrong with this guy?" <laughs> Bro, have you ever seen the Hexican Swarm? <laughs> they just come in. Oh, they took the video out. Like B hex 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 hex. Bro. <laughs> How how much you want to bet they ban those things next uh, next like Bitcoin conference automatically from Mexicans just doing oh, that? <laughs> They're like no heelys. Oh, oh we, got, we got to get top hats, but we got to put like a shark fin at the top. Well, I I think Richard mentioned it one time, like like just he was saying that uh, with like. The next conference, how he's just going to wear a T-shirt, right? That's like the price chart. And then he's going to need another one up here. Uh, I think we, we mentioned even a little bit, like a lot of us, the society has just been very digital. Uh, when when everything opens up again, when we can start doing like conferences and stuff, Hexicans, not only do we have the most fun on like Twitter and stuff like that, but in person too, it's going to be a blast, you know? Oh, dude. I'm just I'm just gonna have like the price chart, and I'm gonna attach like a little bottle rocket at the bottom of it, and then just oh. light it and just shoot it off the price chart <laughs> off my shoulder. It's gonna you know, be if, funny, if, if, we, if we we had a bunch of paper mache stuff, we just keep all the bitcoiners like we find out where the maxes are, and we're just throwing Bitcoin cash fucking stickers at them, <laughs> <laughs> and then yelling out, "May Christ compel you!" as we do it. <laughs> Brand, I need you to I need you to write all these ideas down for our conference. They're gonna Dude, be great. This, I need you to get that notepad out. This is like gold. This is like 4D <laughs> chess I'm playing right now. 
<laughs> I shared I shared the screen. See if you can share this one. Have you seen this one? Let's see. These look more legit. Okay. <laughs> more legit. <laughs> I mean, okay. like the wheels are totally built in, all four of them, dude. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. You it's can like totally I got scroll a along. Gaming console on my uh heel there. That's crazy. That's why I want some of these. Got some bearings or something up front. Is that oh never mind? No, I, th I literally thought that was a fidget spinner. <laughs> it looks exactly oh, yeah, yeah. like one. <laughs> Yeah, I was like you, built in you, fidget spinner. That's you know, true. you know what happened? They couldn't sell them. So like, God, what do we do with these million fidget spinners? Like, bro, I got an idea. I was a big fan of Healy's back in the day. We can do something with these. <laughs> we'll just put them on the toes. Uh yeah, those are cool. I wonder how well they work. They only have four backers. <laughs> four backers and, and zero percent of their fifty thousand dollar goal. Maybe we should nah. make it a reality. Yeah, I don't know what about you're that. Saying I'm all, I'm already like waiting on the wheelies. I'm already waiting on ETH 2.0. I don't want to be waiting a couple of years on the new motorized Heelys. So I'll take, what, I'll take old school. Remember what, Richard, remember what Richard said? You know, Hex makes new whales, and we can be the Healy whales. <laughs> the Healy whales. Everyone will take us seriously. Early stakers in the Healy, you know, phenomena. Uh, be right back in one second. We get a drink. Yeah, go ahead. You know, speaking of uh, speaking of Hex, uh, so um, blanking on his name right now, but um, one of the people in the chat, Crypto King, I blanking on his name, but he mentioned like, oh, is the is the origin address artificial intelligence, and what would happen, blah blah blah. Uh, I just for me personally speaking, I would think that even if that were to be a scenario, I think that the whoever controls the OA would would have that contingency in place if such a thing did happen that's just my guess what do you guys think I, I don't think it's artificial intelligence i think that probably wasn't the right choice of words it's it might be he might there might be some sort of automated code where you can transact with multiple accounts that it has under its control but i don't think it's artificial intelligence it's definitely controlled by either a single entity or multiple entities probably as people have speculated in the past <clears throat> but i don't think it's ai mm -hmm. By any stretch of imagination. No, there's too many glitches in AI. I wouldn't want it to be AI. I just want it to be set by a legal precedent, existing infrastructure, international law. That's fine. I mean, that's exactly what the blind trust would do, right? You mentioned yeah. uh, before. Okay, cool. Blind yeah. trust would mean that even if he wanted to, he couldn't change something about it. And even if he was like some legal issue or, I don't know, Got it. his uh, candelabra catches on fire and burns down the neighbor's house. <laughs> it, nothing happens. To, all right, uh, right. But what yeah. if we use Skynet? <laughs> Skynet, exactly. You're not we, using you know, Skynet already? Sarah Connor already Sorry. prevented that from happening, so don't worry about it. Who's Sarah Connor? She, she went back. Who's Sarah Connor? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look, at that, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. DC, DC, what were you... Uh, see what he did there? Did you see what he did there? He went in a time yeah. loop. He didn't know who Sarah Connor was. What were you, uh, what were you drinking, just Captain? Just right captain. captain. You muted yourself. Good job. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> ah, not, oh, here, not... Let, let, let me tell you my social security number. It. <laughs> Where are my lip readers out hey, there? You know what? Your social security number means almost nothing now. It's really your phone number now. Almost all of our ID and our platforms and systems has to do with your cell phone more than your social security number. Yeah, good point. Because that's what you're going to keep with you and identify and track you. That's your new tracking chip for sure. That was spooky. <laughs> what's, what's up? That was spooky. Yeah. What? Oh, it's just the whole iPhone number. I'm like, damn. I guess he's, yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Your, your phone's true. I mean, even with the tracking device. With credit all the time. And so if a company has an EIN or a TIN or these identifying numbers, if a person has a social security number, that's all good and well, but they still are going to do verification through that person's phone, the cell phone, OTP, all the one-time passwords and things like that. So the identifier was never supposed to be your phone, but pretty much it is now. This is the best Coke right here. It really is. Fuck all other Coke. But there's this. absolutely zero Coke in that. There's no, no, no it's, it's better than Coke. It literally, it's so good, dude. Like, it tastes, it ta if I remember correctly, I think it tastes sweeter than like regular Coke. Yeah, diet, like I literally, you, you isn't it all nutri sweet? It's not really, it's not sugar, right? No, no, no not it's sugar. Not. sugar. I, I'm gonna drink this stuff because I'm on a diet now. I'm a 
I'm a Diet Coke guy if I ever do drink it, just because that's what my dad grew grew up on. But like, I I, I honestly don't touch soda unless I'm mixing it with alcohol, pretty much. <laughs> and when you get that Cerebralink or whatever it is that uh, Elon Musk is doing, right, this uh, Neuralink thing, you'll just right. think you're drinking Coca Cola, but you'll really be drinking Matrix Coca Cola. But we know Coca Cola. Uh, good luck installing that into my head. I'll I'll wait for like the 1,000th generation of that before I even consider it. Well, Jim, you know, when they put me back in the machine, I just want, I want to be some type of a famous opera singer. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> look at the trust that Cypher had to have for that, right? Like, put me yeah. back in, you know, make me rich, make me an, make me an, an actor, an asshole, whatever. All yeah, that trust. I, cause, you I think, know. I think he was just a moron. Yeah, I think he's just dumb. I think that's what that boiled down to. Can you imagine if they didn't betray him and they actually gave him that? That'd be trippy. Well, yeah, see, the but, thing is, so would that be a huge, a programmed trait for Mr. Smith to betray the human, right? Because right. it doesn't have any consequence to Mr. Smith if he gives Cypher, or is Cypher, right? Yeah. Uh, give him utopia, to give right. him what he wants. It doesn't have any impact. It's just code. It's just right. computer code. So if he's going to be rich in this computer code sim, or if it's he's going to be... Uh, the low life of that society in digital format it doesn't make any difference to Mr. Smith. But there, there is the cost of like putting him back in the system. The like, what's the, the cost of the digital the, environment? The, 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 the energy, the energy cost just to get him through the whole thing. Uh, was then yeah, but the energy the comes from the batteries of the humans in the. Gary, pod. let me finish my point. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> is the energy cost and their their machines? Why would they give a fuck anyways? They they rather. And, at the end of the day, why wouldn't they just pull the plug? Why would they give two shits about plugging him back in? Right. So here's the question. I think that actually, uh, who is that guy that does all the, oh, I forgot. He's a big YouTuber. He's got a beard and he's always talking about things like uh, a round image inside of a mirror sphere or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Vsauce. No you ever see Vsauce? You know Vsauce? Yeah. You ever... oh, it's super... He used to be super popular. So the question would be, uh, if you program a sim that's running inside of a piece of software, right? The software is running and you have one person, it's not interactive. It's not like there's more users like in Decentraland. I think it goes slower when there's more people using it, more act actors <laughs> moving inside that environment. Yep. But if it's just running, there's no external user. It's just a running, um, what do they call that? piece of software yeah Program so the software is just running but there's no there's no interactive element no extra users okay right. to have one guy running through a world or have a hundred people running through that world or a million people running through that world doesn't mean that there's any more energy use right it's still the same flat amount of software <laughs> running right there wouldn't be more demand you don't have more people plugging in you just have one software saying, now we're going to count a billion ants moving around instead of five. Does that take more work? Does that take more energy? Mm, it, might be a, it, might be, it might be a higher electrical demand. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. A little bit I'm out of my expertise. Sure yeah. But um, I'm actually going to have to uh, peace out. Uh, looking at the I gotta... <laughs> Always exit scamming, Brad. Dude, I know, I man. I know. talking about Sims and he's got like... Bro, do you see do you see Important that gold things. chain? Like Brand's done. Brand Shit, Brand's dude. a whale. He's uh clearly ready to dump on us. And uh he said later, guys, I'll see you in like maybe 15 years. Maybe. Man, when he I gets off you. stream, he puts on the real gold medallion. He's like, this cheesy shit just comes on for the show. I'm gonna put the real shit on later. I, so, I have been I have been look you're, you're lagging, oh, DC. Software. He is a yeah. sim. I it's knew like, Donald Cox was a sim. It's probably actually the size of like a Flav of Flav kind of like clock. Yeah, you're lagging really bad, DC. You might want to go off video. <clears throat> He's simulated. All right. Simulated. Uh, simulated. <laughs> you are Mr. Smith. <sighs> but I digress. You know, uh, Brand's, a, Brand's a pimp. He's got a table of hose. I concur. <laughs> well, don't True. tell his girlfriend that. <laughs> she might be close by. <laughs> Our little secret. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but it sounds... Oh, yeah, dude. No, yeah. Streaming Welcome. sounds more fun than set, setting up these uh, these IKEA tables or whatever kind of 
Oh, table I, or dinner said thing, dude. I thought I'm he was about to say sex and not setting up. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen too. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, good seeing you. I'll uh, I'll uh, definitely be good around for, for the next time, and uh, we'll definitely catch up more then uh, for sure. So, bye, brother. Awesome, peace out, guys.